Hey guys, Drew with Goose Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is part two to a very big collection that we purchased recently. We were in David's shop last episode and we talked about differences between commodity items and items that are a little bit more tough. And so we're gonna spend a few moments today showing you guys some of the commodity items that we purchased from this deal and some of the cooler stuff that we purchased from this deal. And so it's gonna take us a while to get through it, but we're gonna show you some awesome things along the way. We hope you guys enjoy. We received a lot of comments in the last video about where's all this stuff? Where'd you guys put it? Is it on eBay? Is it on the website? So we're still processing a lot of that stuff. And uh, we're gonna show you a few more coins that you didn't see in the last episode that we bought in the last collection. So we're gonna start off right now with this 1938D dime. As you can see, very pleasant coin, very flashy coin. The collector that we bought these coins from did a very good job about picking out flashy blast white coins he wasn't much into. Toned coins. Next we're gonna move into this 79S in mint state 65 plus with a CAC sticker. Created by NGC. You're going to hear a flashy coin quite a bit in this episode because that's what the collector wanted. We're going to move on to this 1940D graded mid state 67 full bands with a CAC sticker. Very pleasant coin. Cannot complain. These are the coins that you were looking for. This is the coins that we ideally want to pay up for. This is a 1935 piece dollar. Graded MS64 by PCGS. A nice hole filler for a person that's completing their piece dollar set. We'll move on to the next piece dollar, which is this 1935S. Which, in this grade, MS65, if you're looking at a gem coin, very nice. Does not have a CAC sticker, which it would be much more pricey if it did have a CAC sticker. But if you're looking for a 65 set of piece dollars, this could help you out. 1936. Walking Liberty half dollar. <laughs> Mint State 66, you know, another high grade walker for somebody's collection. It does not have a CAC sticker, unfortunately, but you know, probably conservatively graded. It is an older NGC holder. Here are a few of my favorites from the recent buy. All nice blast white coins. I do like a tone coin here and there, but they've got to be exceptional. We are just thankful for the opportunity once again to buy some nice coins to bring to you guys. So before we went to the fun show, we had a collector and his wife reach out to us and ask, hey, if you're at the fun show, could you drive to our house, check out this collection and make us an offer? And so about towards the end of the fun show, we ended up driving out to their house. We ended up striking up a deal and it was awesome. And everybody made it out on top for sure. And so like I said, I want to show you some things that we picked up. And when we're talking about commodity items, I wanted to go into a little bit more detail as David did in the previous episode. Commodity items can be purchased at a certain price and sold at a certain price. And that's what makes sense to a lot of dealers that own shops, especially who purchase a lot of volume from the public. Like we were talking about with silver dollars or American silver eagles or slab silver eagles or if you're buying a Kennedy half dollar 40% or 90% or if you're buying a peace dollar that's a common date what do they buy for and what do they sell it at and so uh, we're going to show you guys these eagles real quick and this is kind of more of a commodity item that you would run to at a shop that there's plenty of and so you know you're looking at just a complete date set of eagles nothing too intense but just good stuff for people to fill out their, you know, their set with. A lot of this stuff, when I look it up, they sell for like 40, 45 bucks. And the better dates, you know, the 86 and the 96, those sell for about 50, 65 bucks. And so when silver is at 30 bucks or 31 bucks, a lot of these coins, you know, if you were to wholesale them out, you might make two or three bucks a coin. Or if you put them out at the show, you might take a year to sell them and you might make four or five dollars. We also bought some albums here. If you can see, uh, a lot of the stuff that's in these albums are 90% silver. And when you open the books, a lot of it's just junk silver. I mean, this was assembled by somebody that thought it was neat to start a book, didn't want to put a bunch of money into it, and that's completely fine. That's how most people, most coin collectors start. and. So we ended up buying a few Washington Quarter books. We ended up buying 
a few Mercury Dime books. We also ended up buying some American Silver Eagle books. And I wanted to show you guys. I'm not sure if it's this one or not. Oh, yeah, it is this one. So this one is toned on every single American Silver Eagle. Not sure if it's artificial or has environmental damage, kind of like the collector was saying. But it's kind of neat to see a full book like this. Maybe it was just where it was held. And that's kind of where the color came from. A lot of sulfur kind of hit these coins, and toning on American Silver Eagles are very common. And this whole book, like I said, has a little bit of a matching look to it. I don't think this book was assembled uh, before they were toned. I think they, they toned after this book was assembled, and that's pretty neat. And we also bought a bunch of silver dollars in this deal. So, you know, we bought some BU dollars, this is an 82cc, and uh, you know, nice flashy coin. And this has also kind of become a commodity item as well. I think a lot of the wholesalers have been moving in that direction. And so say if someone comes in with four or five Carson City Morgan dollars today, and like another guy in three days comes in with seven, a lot of the shops just don't have the customers to buy those, and they just more normally wholesale them. And so, Realistically, where I see a lot of the BU 62 or 63, you know, Carson Cities, they're selling for anywhere between 275 and 285 right now. About a year and a half ago, they were selling for 325 to 350. So the market's kind of come down, and we have to kind of adjust to that. And so, just to be honest with you, I'm, I'm paid 250 dollars for this coin, and I'm going to sell for 275. It's just stuff like that that uh, over a lot of volume, it ends up adding up. There's a, a few more different dollars in here ranging anywhere between coal xf bu au and some are cleaned some have scratches on them some were messed with some were better dates some were not better dates so when we're taking a look at uh, the silver dollars that we purchased most of them were coals which means they either had some issue like rim damage or they were very low grade or they were cleaned and most of the time when you send those out or you sell them, you're going to want to label them as coals. You don't want someone to pay $35 for them. You know, when you're looking at this roll right here, a lot of these are just no rim. You know, a lot of them are just super worn. Uh, someone has put chemicals on them and uh, they're not pretty coins. And so it's just that volume and intensity that shops run to most times, and that's what kind of keeps them going, but they do have to buy a lot, and that's kind of where uh, our prices kind of came into this. If you guys haven't been around, this is Levi. He is a raw dollar expert. He knows the difference between, you know, coal, fine, you know, AU, XF. He's working on uh, our nice little stack over here of dollars that we'll be hitting the website eventually. We're just so thankful to have him on our team. We wouldn't be able to do anything without him. We have been accumulating a lot of 1921 Morgan dollars, peace dollars, and pre-1921 peace dollars. And as you can see, there's a 40% roll of Ike dollars right here. So when you go and purchase quite a few collections within a short period of time, you start stacking up a lot of raw Morgan and peace dollars. And we want to end up selling these to you guys in the near future. So we will be posting these on our website at AcousticCollectibles.com. We will be selling them at what we buy them from wholesalers. So if you guys want to check them out, we will be categorizing them based on their grade and we will be selling them by the roll. So one thing to really harp on that the collector focused on primarily with this collection was eye appeal. And a majority of the numismatic items that we purchased were peace dollars, and the peace dollars that he picked out were phenomenal. We showed you guys the 34S in the previous video. We wanted to show you guys a few other better dates. Um, so we had like a, you know, the 28P here, which is mostly white, has a few kind of dark spots to it. And he also had some better Morgan dollars, like this 85CC Carson. He also had a 1909S Indian head scent. Just better coins that we can list on our website. Some things need to go on eBay. Some things need to go on our website just because there are different places for different customers that pay more. We have, you know, the 28S there. We also have this 43S and 66, which is a little bit of a tougher date in, uh, in higher grades. And then we have this 83CC and 64 dimple. That's a GSA. 
definitely a dimple as well. And so, you know, being able to hold these coins, see how dedicated that the collector was to preserving them and picking them wisely, that's something that we really do love about this collection. Sometimes we buy coins that we're not super enthusiastic about. They're really dark, they're unattractive, they're ugly, they're low grade. But these coins, you know, you're able to sit on them, offer them to you guys, and very happy with these coins. Speaking of another commodity item, but things that collectors look out for, we bought a lot of proof sets from the 60s. You got a 61s, a few 62s, a few 63s. Some of these have certain varieties in them that we can look out for, but most of the time they're just, you know, things you buy for a certain price, sell for a certain price. It's neat to be able to buy just everything, know what it's worth, know what your, uh, your customer base might want. And when you're at shows, you can also offer a variety of different things that customers may need, and that really can get you moving forward. Because, you know, sometimes what we realize is that there's a certain place you might sell things, and there's a certain place you might buy things. You might buy a great collection like this. Some things might work better online, but some things also might work better at a show, right? You might not necessarily want to ship 90% if you're making a dollar coin. You might want to wait for that customer at the show, sell them the coins, make sure that they look nice in person to them, and move on from those things. And so as you're becoming a coin dealer, you're going to want to create different avenues so that you know your cash flow remains steady and you're able to get that liquidity back to buy more collections like this one right here. All right, Casey, what did we just buy? We just bought a 1887 proof $3 gold piece. As you can see on CoinFax, it mentions, you know, Philadelphia Mint, and there was only 160 minted. So what's so valuable about CoinFax that people can use to kind of develop their eye and also understand maybe mintages and values? Like, what do you use it for? Well, as we've talked about in the past, it shows auction records, and then it also shows grading. So if I want to know what a 67 proof looks like, I can look at the images all the way down. Generally, this is this is this has such a low mintage that they're not going to have a lot of images, but if you go to a a coin that has more coins graded by PCGS, they're going to have more true views so you can go through and view and train your eye the high points being worn and what the fields look like and everything like that. So what's your favorite part about this coin in particular and kind of what's the reason behind us buying it? Uh, I enjoy that the mintage is so low and that it has the Cameo designation. So it just the contrast between the devices and the fields make this uh, an exceptional coin. A coin that, I mean, has been around for a very long time. And it it's just a testament to the preservation that has happened since it being minted. So what's the value on something like this, Casey? We are going to be offering this to the public for $17,500. So why is looking at these images on PCGS CoinFAX so important, right? We're going to be discussing non-cameo versus cameo looking proofs. When you're in a show, right, you have this spectrum. Through looking at those images on PCGS CoinFAX, you're training your eye. And if we have a spectrum here from non-cameo to cameo, right, and for example, your non-cameo example sells for $1,500 retail, and your cameo example sells for $3,000 retail. The closer you get to cameo with a non-cameo designation, the more money you may be receiving, the more money you could demand from the public, right? Because at the end of the day, the three things that are very important when you're selling a numismatic coin is eye appeal, eye appeal, eye appeal. If you can get a high eye appeal coin with a non-cameo designation for a non-cameo price, and it, and it resides over here, in the spectrum, you're getting a good deal and it's going to be an easy sell in the future because somebody wants to buy the best coin for the dollars that they spend. So when we're talking about proofs that give you the bang for your buck that are closer to Cameo and are not designated Cameo would be this 1889 dime that is graded proof 62. And if we were to position it on this arbitrary spectrum we have here, we would say that the 1889 resides further away from non-cameo and closer to cameo. You are getting a better value. It is from a purchasing perspective, you're getting the eye appeal, and from the thought that you may be selling it in the future, you are going to get 
a higher premium in our opinion because it is closer to Cameo. So when you have a few coins in your inventory, you're able to give a great lesson on non-cameo versus cameo. So we have a few quarters here currently are in our inventory, and we just wanted to go through and show you, I guess, the differences between a non-cameo versus a cameo. So as you look at this 1873 quarter with arrows, graded proof 65, you can obviously see that there is no difference between the devices and the fields. And it's a dark, semi-unappealing coin. I'll flip it over and look at the back. Dark and unappealing coin. And it is not designated cameo, of course. Now we move over to this one. Just look at the complete difference, right? The devices are nice and pronounced, and the field is very dark. Continues under the back. Just a very pleasant coin. A night and day difference between these two seated quarters here. As we move over to something more modern, we have another example. And this is where I guess you get your another bang for your buck. As you look at this Proof 66 1959 quarter right, you can see that there is no difference between the devices and the fields. And we will flip it over as well. No difference between the devices and the fields. Now, if we compare that to a coin that isn't designated Cameo, but is closer to your Cameo designation on the spectrum, you can see that there is a difference between the devices and the fields, and it is a much more appealing coin from an eye appeal perspective. And it is going to be something that somebody is going to be looking for, an example that they want to put in their set. I want to take a moment and thank you guys for watching today's video. Again, if you're wanting to uh, purchase any of the coins that we mentioned in this video, check out our website, and we will be posting more interesting content like this in the future. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.